Hello everyone, in today's video I will be showcasing a pharmacy management system which I have dubbed ChemCare. ChemCare has been developed to address different pharmaceutical work daily. The system is made for quick implementation, ease of use and inventory accuracy. ChemCare has a simple and easy user interface which makes learning the application simple and straightforward. I'll provide timestamps so you can skip to the most interesting part. For details on how to grab and install the system, keep watching. If you'd like a copy of this system, kindly contact me using the WhatsApp number provided in the description of this video. You can also reach me on Facebook at IT Skills Academy or just comment interested in the description of this video and I'll be reaching you out so that we can discuss about how you can be able to grab this system. All that you need to use in this system is to have a desktop or a laptop and if you intend to use the system without the internet, you require to install a local host and in this case, I will recommend uh, you installing ZAMP. If you intend to use uh, the system while well, connected to the internet, uh, you don't need the ZAMP as the system will be hosted on the internet. Before you get started with the installation of this specific uh, system, the first thing that you'll need to do is to install a local server. And in this case, we'll be installing ZAMP. So if you don't have ZAMP already installed on your machine, uh, just visit apachefriends.org forward slash download.html and you'll be taken to this specific uh, website from where you'll be able to download uh, the latest Apache. Once the application is successfully downloaded, you just need to install it in your computer. When the installation of the uh, ZAMP application is complete, you just need to head on to your search and search for that specific application, which is ZAMP Control Panel application. Just click to open it. It should open automatically. In my case, because I have already installed it, um, installed it, you're going to realize that uh, we have these two modules already started. That is the Apache and the MySQL. To be able to start these two modules, all you need to do is to click on Start, Start. When you click on the Start and they start successfully, the button will turn to Stop, so you can be able to Stop, Stop, just in case you want to stop the two modules. If you're learning into any uh, problems, uh, you can just uh, Google on online or just go on YouTube and uh, uh, search um, um, using the errors that you're getting. There are also various videos on YouTube that helps you to install ZAMP just in case uh, you are facing any difficulties. Well, now that the two modules, that is Apache and MySQL, are running successfully, it's time now that we access uh, the database. So to be able to access the database, you'll have to head back to your browser and search uh, localhost for slash php my admin. Hit enter. That should take you to the PHP my admin from where we'll be able to manage the database. The database is the location where we are going to have all the records of our pharmacy stored. So let's put a comma there and we are going to come back to that. At this specific juncture, I assume that you have already purchased this system and I'll have provided you the, all the accesses that you need to access the system. And by access, I mean the GitHub repository where the specific system is stored. So once you have uh, the access to uh, this specific uh, repository where uh, the system is stored, 
all that you need to do is to head on to this green button here click on the drop down and this should show several options in my case i'm going to download the system as a zip this is what i recommend all right so now you can choose the location where you want to store the system files um, and i would recommend that you have it stored in the desktop to start with just for ease of access but of course you can be able to save it in any other location that uh, you need and uh, now the download is in progress uh, i'll post the video and i'll be back once the download is complete well the download is complete so i can head on to the download icon here and just click on the folder so that i'm directly taken to uh, the uh, location of that specific file uh, I'll need WinLAL to be able to extract the specific file. So to be able to do that, I'll just right click. And then I'll just need to say extract to Chemcare main. If you don't have WinLAL installed in your computer, it is very easy. You can be able to head on to uh, your browser. Just type download WinLAL, which is a free application that you can have it downloaded and installed in your computer. Just use it to extract uh, any files uh, that uh, you have. So I'm currently extracting all uh, the files. Um, in a folder because I will not be able to use the system uh, in this specific uh, status. I need to have it extracted. Okay, so they are uh, extracted uh, successfully. So I will uh, maybe need to delete these so that I don't have duplicates. Uh, and then now I just need to locate the specific uh, file, the extracted one now in this case, which is here. Sorry. I do have it here. And uh, I'll need to open it. And I'll need now to copy the one that is inside the main one because you notice that um, we have two folders. We have this main folder called Chemcare main. And when I open it inside it, I find another one. And this is one that has all the files that I need. So I'm going to copy now uh, the subfolder, which is inside the main folder, Chemcare. So I'm going to uh, have that copied. And then after that, I now need to go to, the, uh, to my file explorer again and locate the local disk C. Now, within the local disk C, if you successfully installed a ZAMP, you're going to find this ZAMP uh, folder. So I'll need you to open that. And then within the ZAMP folder, you need to locate the HT Docs folder. So again, open that. And now within uh, the HT Docs, you're now going to paste uh, the folder that you copied that contains the system files. So that, should not, uh, so that should not take long. And as you can see, uh, we are having that specific file over there. Um, and now ensuring that our ZAMP is still learning, we can now be able to uh, head on back to the browser uh, one more time. And then I go back to uh, the uh, localhost PHP, my admin. You remember we were here, but um, uh, we I promise that you're going to come back here. And another reason as to why we are back here is because we need to create um, the database. We need to be able to create the database. And uh, the files that you have already uh, downloaded and extracted uh, contains uh, the uh, database that uh, the system requires to learn. And you're going to find it uh, here. It will be called Ultimate, Ultimate Pharmacy SQL. So uh, all that I need to do is to copy this specific name the name of the pharmacy or just to be able to be uh, sure you can open uh, uh, this um, text file it's going to open with your text editor so don't worry if you don't have uh, 
the Microsoft Word all in the, uh, it doesn't require any uh, extra uh, application to open it. It just requires uh, the notepad, which is one of the applications that comes by default with your machine. So you don't need to worry about that. Oh, sorry, uh, th that is not the file that I intended to see. Um, sorry, we have several files here. Uh, this is what I intended to see. And that the reason as to why we are here again is because I need to copy this name because this is very important because if uh, you have a typo uh, with this name, it's not going to work for you and you're going to run into errors. So I'm going to copy that specific name, then head on back to PHP my admin over here. And uh, from the uh, sidebar here, I'm going to create a new database to be able to do that. I just need to click on new. And uh, from here, I just need now to paste the name that I've copied and say create. So you realize that the database is created successfully, but it doesn't have any tables. As you can see, it says no tables found in the database. So to be able to have the tables, all that you need to do is to head on to the import. And then uh, under the file import, uh, go to the shoes file. <coughs> And uh, you need to locate the folder that contains the system files. In this case, I have it here. So I just need to open that. Or rather, let me just go to the one that is within the uh, local disk C. So that should be, um, I need to locate a ZAMP, which is here. And then I need to go to HD Docs. And then within here now, I need to open this one. Uh, and now here I need to locate that specific file, which is this one over here. And then I say open. So after that, I'll just need to um, import it. So this is going to take some time as we have several tables in the database. So just give it uh, time to load all the tables. So as you can see, we have imported all the tables successfully. Uh, and now we can be able to see the tables on the left side here, as you can see. And if I click on that, I should now be able to see uh, the individual tables over here. And so now I can be able to open whatever table that I need to open. So now that we have uh, the database uh, successfully um, complete, we can now try to access the system and see how it works. So head on to your browser and type localhost forward slash can. Right, so as uh, the files that you need are within some other directories, at this moment, I'll just need to uh, click on source, then on the ticket. You will only need to do that once, then after that, you can be able to uh, have these, of course, bookmarked like that. And so now in future, if I want to access this specific page, all that I need to do is to go to the browser. Uh, then I need to locate my uh, bookmark. And then I will just need to locate it and click to open it like that. So now the system is successfully installed. So without so much ado, uh, we are here on the login screen. And how the system works is that uh, you're going to have um, different users 
who are going to have different loads. Um, there will be the super user who will have the full control and who is also going to give the security rights to all the other users. And uh, currently we have the credentials of the super user uh, already auto-populated here. And so what I'm just going to do as of now is to click on login. And so if you provide the uh, correct credentials, you'll be logged in. And uh, the first thing that you're going to see is the dashboard, which basically contains uh, the analytics uh, section. We just choose the status of the pharmacy. Uh, below here, we have this banner that just shows the initial capital and uh, all time pharmacy balance. And also below here, we're going to see the sales. So um, the access of uh, these various uh, components uh, will uh, depend uh, with uh, the accesses that uh, a user has been provided. So the super user has uh, the full control to determine what each and every user will have access to. On this other end, we have uh, the cyber which contains links to the various um, features that the system provides. But before we get there, we also have uh, the top um, nav bar here, which um, to start with here, we have the quick access uh, toolbar, if I can call it so, which helps you to quickly access the point of sale, helps you to access uh, the orders, and also quickly helps to uh, help you to access the invoices. We also have the notification area here where you'll be able to see uh, the drugs that are out of stock and also those that are expired. You'll also have the ability to switch between the dark and light theme. Uh, here you have uh, the uh, user profile, so you'll be able to see uh, the um, the user's uh, profile image. You're also able to see the name. And once you click on that, there will be a drop down that has uh, several options. Uh, so, to be specific, we have the settings, we have the activity logo, and we also have the option to log out. As of now, I'm going to click on the settings because um, before you start using the system, there are a few settings that you need to set up. So, let's head on to the settings. And uh, uh, in the settings here, you're going to see um, that being separated into three uh, sub-components. So we are having uh, the settings for the user, we are having the settings for the pharmacy, and we also have uh, the settings for the mean quantities or the minimum quantities. So we are going to see how this um, is important and uh, why we need to set it up. So as of now, we need to, first of all, um, provide uh, the system with the initial capital. So if uh, this is the first time that uh, you're opening the pharmacy or you're just getting started with your pharmacy, then you can put the initial amount that you're starting at the pharmacy with. Or if the pharmacy has been existing, then you can be able to put uh, the uh, adding uh, year balance uh, here. So basically, you're just uh, giving the system um, the um, status of the pharmacy in terms of um, uh, finances. Why this is important is because any transaction that will be performed within this specific um, a system and that will require uh, finances, uh, the amount will be deducted from the initial capital that you have provided. So in that case, I'm referring to any purchases that uh, you're going to make. Uh, the um, purchases um, applies or uh, the amount that you'll have purchased, uh, um, the drugs will be deducted from the initial capital that you have provided. So um, to quickly get started, I can just hit on update uh, uh, company uh, here. So if I click on that, I'm given this um, window um, or dialog window that appears here. So by default, there will be some uh, default um, inputs here, which you can replace with your own um, information. 
so like uh, for example this one i can call it um up uh ups so that is uh, ultimate pharmacy management system uh this one i can change it to uh upms um i can just have a default mobile number here or just um, a test number uh, i can also provide uh, a location so and this is what is very important the initial capital so um in this maybe i can just talk of uh, 50000 um and here you will also have an option of selecting um a company's profile picture so uh, let me see if i can be able to get one here so for example let me just pick that and then here you're going to provide the currency so depending on um the currency that you use uh, in your country so you can provide that here so just to standardize i'm just going to put um, a dollar then after that i'm just going to say a bit and as you can see uh, uh, we are uh, informed that uh, uh, the information has been updated successfully and uh, we can be able to see uh, that information here if you ever want to change again you just need to click on the update and then you can be able to update it as you need um so for the uh, minimum quantities we are going to come back to that uh, but when it comes to uh, setting the user's um, uh, information, you can also be able to click on the edit and you can be able to edit the information as you need. So say for example, we want to change the profile image, I can um, change that right here. So let me see. You can see a uh, user updated successfully and be able to see that image uh, appear right there. So, uh, see so now, for example, we head on back to the dashboard here. Uh, we should not be able to um, see, uh, see if a lot is happening, but you can be able to see from this banner here, you're having the initial capital. Uh, which is the um, the amount that we have started uh, the pharmacy with and which is also the balance because we have not done any transactions yet you'll also be able to notice that um, in this um, analytics uh, analytic uh, section uh, we have these arrows that are pointing downwards so these arrows will just uh, be able to help you to understand how your pharmacy is doing um, uh, and this is in, in a graphical way. So if um, the sales are going up, of course, the arrow will be pointing up. And if um, yeah, the sales are going down, then it will be pointing down as it is here. But how the pharmacy will be able to know whether it are moving up or down, uh, this will depend on the minimum quantities that you will have set. So maybe you can be able to set um, a target for um, daily uh, sales so if it goes below uh, the minimum amount that you'll have set then that will mean that um, the sales are uh, moving downwards and if it goes above that of course it means that the, the pharmacy is doing good in terms of sales so we can just come over here and the settings i can um, uh, uh, click on this specific icon here which helps me to update because by default it will be zeros. So I can come and talk about if it is the pharmacy balance, it should not be below $20, for example. The sales per day, uh, let me talk of um, maybe a thousand. Um, and that is the uh, total sales, sorry, total sales should be 30. Uh, so uh, this one now will be daily, so I can have a thousand. 
or maybe let's talk of uh, seven thousand um, seven hundred and the sales orders maybe can be three hundred um so uh, uh for the invoice here i'm referring to the amount that should be out uh, in terms of invoice like um, the what we call it um um the accounts uh, receivable the accounts receivable so uh, for example here we can talk over 500 uh, the wastages is like if there's any drug maybe that fell and um, it's damaged or uh, you can be able you cannot be able to sell that drug or because it is expired but it is damaged uh, because of physical uh, damage or something so you can just set the minimum amount that you would expect um, or that you can bear um, in your business so for example we can talk of uh, um, 200 Well, let me just talk of twenty dollars. Um, so uh, the purchases that you can make, you know, when you make more purchases, it means that your pharmacy is doing good. If you do less, it means that um, uh, the pharmacy is not doing as good. So uh, here you can also set the amount that you need. So in this case, uh, for example, I can just talk over ten thousand expired. Let me just put it five hundred. Uh, for the profit that I expect, um, I can talk of um, uh, overall uh, uh, profit of like, let's say, $5,000. Then after that, I just hit uh, submit. And uh, that is updated successfully there, and you're able to see those uh, figures uh, appear here. And now, when you go back to the dashboard, nothing much will change because uh, still uh, we have these um, figures in zeros, so still be pointing downwards. But when we start now making some transactions, you'll notice that uh, these arrows will be pointing up and down um, based on whether the amount is less or um, higher than the minimum amount that uh, we did set there. So um, uh, that's uh, the initial thing that you need to do before you start using the pharmacy system. All right, so um, in the next uh, chapter, uh, we can um, move on to how you can be able to create users uh, who will be using uh, this specific system. So this being the super user, uh, they have uh, uh, the ability to be able to add users and how you are able to do that is by going to the user accounts, then you can either directly click add users or you can just say users so that you see the users that are available uh, and you can also be able now to click on add user over here. So we're just going to add um, a user uh, so, for example, let me just call them user, and I uh, the email is also user. Uh, let me just give a default number, and uh, for the password again, I say user. And here we are going to have the role. Uh, so, like, um, what uh, rights do they have? So, I'm going to talk of a standard user. So, this means that they they are going to have limited. Uh, accesses uh, limited privileges and also uh, you can also have the account banned instead of deleting so uh, for now we're just going to leave it like that that means it is not banned and we're going to say register new user so the user is created successfully as you can be able to see here um, and uh, the user is over here so um, as of now the user doesn't have any lights so we need to add some lights to this specific user uh, so that they can be able to uh, have access to whatever uh, it is that we want them to have access uh, depending on what uh, they will be doing in the pharmacy so i'm just going to uh, come over here and say add security lights um, <clears throat> So, for example, we can say that they will have the following permissions they can be able to view. 
Um, and also we can also be able to create, uh, maybe we can say they should not be able to delete or edit anything. Uh, we can also say that they need access to uh, customers, they need access to suppliers, uh, they can have access to sales uh, products. Um, and then we can say they don't have access to stock expenses, they can have access to those form medicine size, and then they don't have access to, to the rest. So we can uh, update that. And in any case, you want to either remove or um, add more uh, rights to uh, that user, you can be able to hit on edit, and uh, you can be able to come and um, um, have that changed. So uh, for now, let's try to log in with that user. So just a minute, I want to have a private window here. If this will allow me to have it side by side. Okay, uh, just give me a moment. Okay, there you go. Uh, so that can go there. Okay, then you have this here. And we can try to um, say a local host and uh, this one should be um, upms forward slash slc um, and uh, now here we can try to log in using uh, the uh, users credentials that we have provided to them uh, so I just say a login and uh, if I can just maximize this, just so that you can be able to uh, see what's happening here, you can be able to see that um, um, here we are having uh, this user uh, uh, with only these accesses because that's what we have provided them uh, with. Um, and also they can also be able to have uh, the settings as well, uh, but they cannot to be able to uh, like set up the pharmacy uh, information, they cannot be able to set the minimum quantities. Uh, the only thing that they can be able to do is maybe to update the profile information. So like uh, for example here, um, let me just look for uh, something here, oh sorry. Um, Okay, let me just pick an image, um, then update, um, and that should be updated there. So the image will appear here once the user logs in again. So, yeah, but they can also be able to do uh, everything other else here. So let's say, for example, we don't want this user to access, um, to have access to customers. So we can uh, get back here. We just have these maximized like that. Um, and then you need just to go to the user's accounts, so users, and then you go to the specific user that uh, you need to uh, give access or uh, all the lights. And then now uh, we can come and say, we don't want them to have the uh, customers. So you just need to have that updated. So that's updated successfully over there. Well, now that we have almost everything uh, set up, we can start to use the system. But before we start using the system, we need to provide it with some ingredients or some materials that will help it to um, work. And um, that is basically uh, the products uh, that the pharmacy system will be managing. And uh, in this case, I'm referring to them as products, but you can call them medicine, you can call them drugs. But before we start adding the product, we need to add some uh, information that um, will um, come along with the products. And that is uh, the uh, dose form and the medicine size, and not forget the suppliers. Let's start with the medicine size. And when I'm talking about medicine uh, um, size, I'm talking of it in terms of the capacity. So like, uh, is it a hundred mg? Is it uh, 60 ml? Is it a hundred ml? So you can be able to um, 
be able to add that. So um, if you need to add any, you can just uh, come and click on the add dos from here. And then you just need to provide the name. Um, you can also make it active and then you can provide a description uh, for it. Um, We also have uh, the category, and uh, the category, uh, this now refers to whether it is a tablet, it's a sale up, uh, or it's a capsule. So like, for example, um, here, because we don't have any, uh, we can click on and, and here I can uh, uh, just come and talk about uh, tablet. I can also make it active. I can provide a description if I want, so maybe just to test whether that is working i can see you know description for now and i can uh, hit submit and that will be added successfully as you can be able to see over here so this being the super user they have the control to edit and also delete um, a specific uh, product but i also um, don't recommend deleting unless you are sure that you want to delete that specific record and it's not going to affect any other record moving forward. So now the medicine size and the dose form uh, are added. Now what we need to add is the supplier. So again, you just need to locate this add um, supplier button. And then I can uh, provide um, a name. So let me just say, a sample supplier sorry um, i did hit enter before i provide the rest of the information uh, but that is no worries because i can be able to uh, edit so um, i can uh, provide um, an email here and a phone number and then i hit on submit uh, i notice that that is updated successfully and now when we go back to the suppliers here we should be able to see that information being provided there. Uh, as of now, you can see it is reading inactive. So if you want to activate it, sorry, uh, you just need to check on this button and for some reason it's not working for now, but I'm going to have that fixed. So we can be able to check and uncheck this button to make the product um, active. Okay, so for now we have the uh, status of, uh, of the supplier uh, being active, but I'll be fixing that bug so a person can be able to do it from the end uh, with ease. Well, that the supplier is added. Of course, remember you can be able to add as many as you want. Um, I remember if you would like to add a bulk of uh, suppliers, uh, you can be able to come and click on import over here and then you need to import that specific file of course it should be an excel file that you have already created uh, and then uh, you will provide a list like you uh, write down all the suppliers and in that case you're going to have uh, all this information you're going to have a column for supplier name you're going to have a column for phone a column for email column for status and um, yeah, just that. So when it comes to the status, um, Zillow will represent active, while one will represent um, inactive. Zillow will represent active and one will represent inactive. So for the column of the status, you need to uh, just type zero, uh, which will mean that that supplier is active. And then for the email, the phone number, and the supplier name, you provide that information. And then all you just need to do is to come and choose that specific um, file uh, here. Uh, and then you just say import, and that information now should be uh, provided here. Um, now that uh, the supplier uh, has been added, or all the suppliers that you require are added, you can now add the products that um, you need. All right, so to be able to add the products, all you just need to do is to locate the add products button. Just click on that. 
and then here you're going to provide the specific um, product name uh, in, in this case maybe I can talk of uh, that specific uh, drug there um, or let me just come and see Uh, Panando so that I can have it as a tablet and I can say it is added mg I can uh, pick a file uh, or an image uh, for it um, don't know whether I have any images for now um, So there you go, and then I'll choose a supplier, and the status I'll have it uh, being active. I can include a description for it, maybe the dosage and all that. Can have that information provided here. Then after that, I can uh, hit uh, submit, and the product uh, the product is added successfully. But uh, just adding the product just tells uh, the system. Uh, that yes you're dealing with that specific uh, product like you're selling that you're stocking that specific uh, product but as you can notice the stock and the buying price and the selling price as of now is zero so uh, this is just to notify the system uh, of all the products that um, you are dealing with and now to be able to stock uh, you will need to first of all do a purchase and then now you need to move them to the product and so how do you do that uh, before we continue you notice that uh, here now the notification we have notification and if i click on that i'm uh, told that this drug is out of stock because as you can see around here we have in this lead circle that uh, shows that uh, this drug is um, clearly out of stock so we need to be able to stock it up and uh, you can be able to see that uh, here we can be able to uh, click on this specific uh, button so that we can be able to take action and uh, um, when you click on that button basically um, or when you click on this specific um, link here it just takes you to the product um, um, page from where all you just need to do is to do a requisition but you cannot do a requisition you cannot request something that is not already stocked and uh, that is why first of all before we do any requisition before we take any action uh, what we need to do is to purchase this specific drug or have it stocked in other terms so to be able to do that i'm going to go to the purchases i click on purchases a list and then here i need to uh, click on and purchase but remember before you click on and purchase um, the um, cost of what you're purchasing uh, should uh, not be less than um, at the uh, pharmacy uh, balance it should not be less than the pharmacy uh, balance so you should be able to check that uh, because if that is not the case if you try to purchase some drugs and then your pharmacy uh, balance is less than the cost of the purchase then the system will not allow you to proceed and it will tell you insufficient funds so i'm going to go ahead and uh, do that here click on and this should provide me with this specific form uh, and all i just need to do right now is to select so like for example you notice that um, in this case we just need to select from the existing medicine remember you can also be able to search for it over here but because we already have one in this case i just need to select it is a tablet i also need to provide uh, the uh, what we call the expiry date so i can see maybe it's expiring next year out there and then here i need to say sample and uh, here I can put some um, uh, purchase uh, quantity. I just need to provide like um, the quantity that I'm purchasing, and I'm going to provide the quantity that I'm purchasing depending on or based on how I'm going to sell them. So if I'm going to sell them in cartons, I need to put the quantity in terms of cartons. 
um, if I'm going to sell a individual um, pieces, then I need to put those individual uh, pieces, how I'm going to sell them. So say, for example, a carton has uh, maybe a hundred pieces. Um, I'm going to put hundred pieces over here. But if I'm going to sell them in terms of uh, cartons, then I'm just going to say one, and then I put the buying price of the whole carton. So in this case, I'm going to just put uh, maybe 100 pieces. Uh, which are going for maybe um, 10 bob or maybe let me say yeah, 10 bob and then maybe I can talk about 15 so when I click on this specific um, field here the profit is generated automatically so I will hit on uh, submit and uh, that has been added uh, successfully and now if we go back to the dashboard here uh, we're going to notice uh, something happening you're going to notice that uh, we have made a purchases of a hundred um, I mean a thousand dollars that has been subtracted from the initial capital uh, where now we have uh, 49,000 so if I now go to the uh, product over here, I'm going to notice that um, um, we have something going on. Uh, we, we can notice that um, we have now um, the buying price and the selling price for this specific uh, product. And so uh, this uh, can give us an idea that uh, the uh, product has already been uh, purchased and stocked. And so now we can go ahead and do a requisition of the same. I'm going to click on the requisition. Um, and here you can be able to do a search of whatever uh, it is that uh, you want because there will be a long list of all the stock that you're going to have. Uh, so in this case, we only have one. So I just need to provide the quantity. So say I want to move 50 from the store to the, um, to the what? Uh, to the display or to the pharmacy. So maybe can just say the destination is a display uh list so okay. stroke pharmacy and i can do request and that is added here uh, so i can be able to request as many uh, as i want and because i'm the super user i will also have the ability to approve that specific request so i'm just going to proceed down here after i'm done with everything that i need And because again, I'm the super user, I can be able to approve the orders or the request. So now uh, when I approve, uh, I'm taken back to the product and now you notice that uh, the stock has been updated, the revenue that I'm going to get out of that. And now uh, the notification has also disappeared because now we have that product, uh, the stock. And now that the product has been stocked, the next thing is to uh, make sales of a specific um, product and so in that case I need to head on to the sales and for the sales they can happen as a point of sale this is where you're going to get the money immediately uh, and then you can also be able to make sales orders this is where this that thing or the product will be ordered maybe uh, an invoice will be written for the same and then the payments will be made uh, maybe later or maybe also immediately so for now, we're going to deal with the point of sale. So I just go to the point of sale over here. Um, and then uh, I'm taken to the point of sale over here. Uh, you notice here you can be able to do a search. We have a cart uh, icon there. And we have the only uh, product or medicine that we have available. And we can also be able to know the stock over here. Uh, we can be able to see the name of that uh, and also the cost using these buttons uh, we can be able to uh, we can be able to like uh, increase or reduce the the, the the quantity that we want uh, but unfortunately for now you notice that uh, it is restricted because it looks like this product we have added it but we have not uh, activated it so i need to head on back to the products to be able to fix that and uh, click on edit
and here you see I just need to uncheck that so that it says that it's not um, it's not what um, it, it's, it's not uh, deactivated uh, and then I just need to submit um, and now that means that the product is active and we can be able to um, like uh, sell it out so I'm going to go back to the point of sale I can either do it that uh, from here or I can click on this which takes me here and you now notice that we now have the ability to add uh, that because it's not restricted so I just need to uh, click on and so maybe I just want to say like one a piece so I can just say one and then I add so that will be added over here so I can add as many as I want of either this one or a different one uh, then after I'm done I'm just going to say continue so say for example I change the mind and say I want to uh, add another one I'll just uh, uh, click on and and you see it says quantity updated and then I add and this one will still be one because it's the same product but different quantity so after I'm done with that I just need to uh, click on continue and I'll be able to see that information appearing here I don't have the option to proceed to checkout because I need to provide some information uh, here uh, the customer details and the payment details um, but um, at this specific point if I change the mind and I don't want to sell this specific product I can be able to remove it can be able to remove it I can also be able to change the quantity over here quantity updated I like that um, if I want to remove I can just click on remove and that um, item is removed if you attempt to click on continue here uh, nothing will happen because you don't have anything added to your cart yet so you need to include something to your cart uh, before you uh, click on continue all right so how this system works is that uh, it needs to have some customer information included you can be having individual customer details or you can uh, be having a one individual customer like a walk-in customer you can just call them a walk-in customers um, who you don't have to provide uh, uh, a lot of details about them so um, at this specific point we don't have any customers added yet so we can be able to do that uh, either from here or we can go to the customers uh, over here and add the customer and let me just uh, add a walk-in customer uh, I can maybe provide some uh, Uh, information here the phone number is very very important because this is the number that we'll be using to pull out the customers information we don't want to provide the next of kin uh, phone number and the date of birth is okay um, yeah those two options are optional but the phone number and the name are mandatory so I now need to hit on submit and that just notifies me that the customer has been added successfully so let me just proceed on to the cut continue so now if I click select customer I'm able to see the phone number of the customer and if I select that phone number um, the details of the customers will be displayed later but now we need to provide the payments information so here we are about we are supposed to uh, pay 15 the mode of payment that we're using is cash and uh, here we also provide the amount that um, the user uh, or the customer has uh, given to us if we click on this box that will give us a balance of zero so say for example the mode of payment is uh, mobile money you when you click on the mobile money you're going to have an option of providing the transaction number or the transaction code um, so let just go with cash for now and uh, we hit on submit and uh, you'll notice uh, the information will be added the customer information is added there 
we're also going to have uh, the uh, receipt number uh, appearing here and also the receipt date uh, which is today at this point you cannot be able to remove uh, even if the button is there because when you remove then this amount uh, is already recorded and there might be some discrepancies you're also going to notice that uh, here we are going to have the mode of payment to that i can click on save to just check that out and uh, a receipt is provided for me here where i can be able to proceed to print the receipt all right so now that we have made some uh, uh, transaction we've made some transactions we can go back to the dashboard and see what's happening there so we can be able to see uh, from the today's uh, sales section here we've made sales of 15 dollars uh, we've made a profit of five, uh, five uh, shillings from this because the initial uh, buying price was 10 we suggest zero purchases a thousand uh, expiring we don't have anything and the total sales as of now is zero and uh, if we scroll down here we are able to see that specific um, sale and if you want to see more details about this specific sale you can click on this icon here which takes you to this specific page where you're able to see the sales uh, details we have the uh, order details here have the customer details and we have everything that was purchased and we also have uh, the balance which is as of now a zero the option to download the pdf is not available as of now but i'm working towards having that um, uh, being possible all right so Now we've been able to make sales uh, using uh, the point of sales uh, or the POS, uh, but you can also uh, be able to make some sales um, by using invoices or what we can call sales orders. And how you can be able to do that is you can go to the sales, then you say and sales order. I go to sales and say add sales order. So this should take you to this specific page uh, where you're going to have um, the sales order um, and then here you're going to have the orders that uh, you've made. So for example, you need to come and choose the um, specific uh, product that uh, you're selling and here you're going to come and add the quantity. So say for example, we want 10 and we have to provide the status so we can say it has been ordered um, then we can also select ordered and here we need to provide uh, the customer um, who is ordering this specific uh, product so let me just provide a dummy uh, product here or the other um, uh, name and email address you also need to provide a phone number and then you can add Remember, you can be able to add as many orders as uh, they have been requested or as requested. <clears throat> uh, you can also be able to remove um, just in case uh, you don't want one of the products to appear. So just like that. And uh, once you have added the customer details um, that uh, will be um, recorded by the system and you don't have to add it uh, again so you only need to add it once so add as many as um, has been ordered and that will be accumulating down here and once you're done you just need to uh, click on proceed And now you're going to see a summary of uh, what uh, you have added and all you just need to do is to say save and the system will be able to uh, record uh, who has um, uh, done uh, uh, that request or who has processed that specific request so all you just need to do is to say save and uh, the system will automatically generate an invoice uh, for that 
So um, as you can now see, we are directed to the sales order and you can be able to see the specific uh, sale order. And this is basically like the invoice. So like, for example, if you click on uh, this icon here, <coughs> it, sh it shows you uh, that specific um, invoice uh, over here. And now you can be able to make the payment. So you can see that the payment is uh, 150. So I can add that payment. And I also need to change the status. So for example, this has been delivered. And uh, we can also change the status to paid. And then after that, we just need to say uh, paid. And that now should be paid. And if I try to go pay it again, um, I will not be able to have uh, the option to do that because um, that invoice has already been paid. Um, so if you now go to the dashboard here, you're now going to uh, get that amount as account uh, payable. So all the money that is received from payments, you're going to have them as account uh, payables. And of course, that amount will also be included in the, the pharmacy or time balance. So the other thing that we are going to look at is how the system is going to manage uh, expired drugs. <coughs> and uh, we're just going to add a sample uh, drug here that we are going to have it deliberately expired so that we see how the system is going to manage that. So let me just go to the products and uh, I'm going to just to make it easy for us to understand going to call it X. So let's make it a tablet of added MG and we can also provide an image for it. So see for ex for instance we pick this as the image we say open we say it's coming from that sample and then we have it active. Um, we can also say expired then we hit submit <clears throat> so that is added as you can see but now the, the, the quantity is zero so we can now head on to the purchase so that we can be able to purchase that specific um, drug so let's say and um and uh, this is the one that we are purchasing the uh, category is um, tablet have it expired uh, deliberately sample uh, let's just say that uh, we've purchased the uh, five and one is going at finishing links 50. the intention was to sell it at 55 to get a profit of five then uh, we submit and uh, that is added uh, successively, as you can see over there. Uh, and now here, uh, uh, you can see that the drug is almost out of stock, uh, expired uh, quantity zero. So uh, this, this, this specific notification is leading uh, drugs that are in uh, the display. So if I go to the products over here, I'm going to say that, but uh, EC is still out of stock. Uh, uh, so all I now need to do is to request uh, or move it from uh, the um, <clears throat> uh, from the stock uh, to the uh, display or the pharmacy. So let me say I want like uh, ten of them. And uh, maybe I want them to go to the display to pharmacy. Then I request. Oh, sorry, we have five. Uh, we have requested 10. Okay, let's request all the five. We take them to the pharmacy request. So that is added there. So we um, proceed. And here we approve the five so that they are moved to the pharmacy. 
so now here you can see that um, other than just have these learning out of stock um, the drug is almost out of stock because they have five uh, we also notice that they are expired so if I head to the dashboard <coughs> Uh, you're going to realize that the expired is a zero um, because um, what ha what is happening is that um, uh, the drug is expired uh, already but um, we need um, someone to confirm to actually confirm that the drug is expired maybe by just look, uh, going to the display and uh, having that physical check and then after uh, we have that physical check and confirm that yes, um, this this specific uh, drug or medicine is expired, then all we need to do is to go to the stock adjustments, and then make adjustments, and then here you're going to find uh, that expired drug or drugs or medicine. And now what you just need to do is to click on this uh, specific icon. Uh, you're going to see the specific drug that is expired, its category, uh, the available quantity, and here you can provide the quantity that is expired. You can provide the quantity that is expired because in some cases it might not be like the whole um, 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 list of uh, this specific uh, drug here. It could be you topped up uh, at some point and so they have different dates. So you can, uh, after having that physical check, confirm that only uh, five out of the possible, possible ten are expired. Or five out of the possible ten are expired. Um, and then here <clears throat> you can come and uh, provide the expense date. So that is when you did the adjustment. Um, <clears throat> or, or just provide the date that, uh, sorry, the date that that specific drug expired. As you can see, I have noted that down there. So you can provide any notes, uh, but that is optional. Then after that, you just need to click on continue to adjust. <clears throat> and now that will be removed from uh, the expired uh, down here. <clears throat> Um, and uh, now that will be taken to uh, the um, expired. So, like uh, for example, uh, if I now move from the stock adjustments and go to the expenses and click on expenses, I'm going to see all the expenses here the expired, the purchases, the damage, and all that. Um, and here you're able to see the drug that um, expired and uh, how worth they are. And if you want to view the details, you can click on view details. And this is now when you're going to see that specific um, uh, drug that is expired. So you're able to see that we have five uh, at a cost of 555 uh, uh, and the revenue is um, 275. So now if we head back to the dashboard, uh, you're now going to realize uh, that we have that amount uh, over there and we should be deducted. Uh, um, okay. Um, the other thing that uh, you can also be able to do in terms of the, uh, the expenses, um, if you go to the expenses here, um, you might be having a lot of uh, the expired drugs and because you don't want to delete them, uh, but you still don't want them to be a part of uh, what is appearing in your uh, in your records or in your uh, calculations, um, then you can be able to archive it. So you just have the left call, uh, but in, in a separate uh, sort of um, space. Uh, so that is not part of your math as, as you're doing your end of month or end of year calculations, you're not going to include that. It's just like a way of separating it, but like not deleting it completely. So you can be able to come and archive it here. Uh, confirm uh, all the details, confirm all the details, uh, and then you say uh, submit. Uh, 
And so now when you go back to the um, analytics, you're going to realize that that amount is not uh, there uh, because uh, we have decided to like uh, separate it from uh, the uh, pharmacy accounts. We have decided to uh, separate it, but it's not like completely removed. So at any point, if you want to see uh, all the drugs that has ever been expired, then you can be able to move to the archive and you're able to see that specific uh, record uh, appearing over there. Um, if at any point you would like to add uh, the specific amount, say for example you want to top up uh, the amount that you're investing to the pharmacy, uh, you can always head on back to the settings uh, back here. And if you're the super admin, uh, you will always have the ability to uh, edit uh, all these details. So like for example, I can say update company. Um, and uh, here, let's say I want to add 5,000. So I can come and uh, add 5,000 there. And then I'll just need to use update the location here. Let me say um, and then I just need to say update. And that amount should be uh, updated over here. And now if I go back to the dashboard, I should also be able to see uh, that update uh, over here, which is also, of course, going to affect the, the balance uh, as well. Um, any changes that you are making to the system, uh, the system is able to uh, maintain an activity logo, uh, which you can be able to access it by going to your profile uh, um, picture here and then going to the activity logo. And here you're also going to see uh, uh, the um, a list of everything that has been done. So like, for example, uh, the super user has added uh, business information. OK, uh, uh, then the user archived uh, uh, the medicine expired at this uh, specific date at this specific time. So all this information is, is being tracked so you can be able to see everything that is happening in the system um, and uh, you can also be able to see by dates and uh, by time and when that specific thing happened including the logging out including the logging in so you can be able to like uh, trace when a person logged in and when they uh, logged out of the system Uh, for security reasons, you may always want to have your data backed up. So it's always important that you have the database um, records uh, backed up just in case something happens. So the system provides that ability to be able to uh, download the database so you can be able to head on to the database here and then you click on export uh, database and here you just need to say export uh, a database and it will just say that the data was uh, all database was exported successfully and uh, if we can check that out uh, we should be able to see that specific um, record. Let me just try to pull it out. And um, here you go. So yeah, they will be moved to um, pages and then database. So you'll also be able to see it there. So 
Um, all alone, we have seen how we can be able to provide accesses to the various users that the system is managing. Uh, but we didn't have an opportunity of seeing how we can be able to provide uh, the privileges. So like that is the privilege of deleting, uh, the privilege of editing, or even approving um, anything using the system. So we want to be able to do that. So I'm just going to go direct to the user accounts down here, then users. Then here I'm going to come and choose this one user that we have added. And uh, on top here, you can see we have uh, the um, user permissions. So uh, these ones are the privileges, the, the ones that appears in this dark section, and these that appears in our, our gray uh, section are the accesses. So um, for example, now this user has the privilege of viewing and deleting and also uh, creating. Um, but we can decide that we don't want this user to delete anything, uh, so we can just remove that privilege and then update. So if I now go back to that user in a different uh, window here, um, and then I uh, do a refresh um, and uh, say now, for example, I try to access one of the records so like uh, customers, you're going to see that the user doesn't have the privilege of doing that. Uh, if let's say, for example, we want to have the user sorry, um, being able to edit the records, we can just uh, uh, provide or grant that privilege um, update. And then now if I come and refresh here, you now notice that now the user has that uh, privilege of editing uh, the records and they can be able to do that with ease. So uh, that's how you can be able to grant privileges to the users uh, and it is any user that you create. So you can be able to create custom users and uh, grant them the accesses that you want and grant them the privileges that um, you need them to have based on what the system is able to, to do. If for any reason you want to terminate a user's access to the system, you can be able to do that by disabling the user. And how you do that is you go to the user's accounts, then users, then you're going to locate uh, the user that you want. So in this case, we can like, um, just use this one. And then I'm going to um, click edit. And then on this end here, you find there is this check button. And if the button is checked, it means that the user is disabled. Um, and if the button is unchecked, it means the user is enabled and they can be able to have access to the system. So I'm just going to click on uh, disable and then I update that. I should get a notification that the user has been updated. And then let me just try to uh, now log in. Um, I assume I'm that user. And uh, I want to try and log into the system. And once I try to do that, um, I'll be blocked and a notification will appear telling me that your account is disabled, kindly contract uh, your admin. Well, given that I may not be able to cover everything that the system provides in this video, otherwise the video will be too long. I'm working on a written documentation uh, that comprehensively explains um, uh, how the system works uh, step by step. Uh, I'm not yet done with this documentation, uh, but I'll be providing a link in the description of this video uh, from where you'll be accessing this documentation, which I will be updating on a regular basis uh, based on the status of, of the system. So just to uh, give you a preview of how the documentation looks like. So once you click on the link, you'll be taken to this specific page here, uh, which basically um, <clears throat> has this specific title, ChemCare, which is a pharmacy management system. So you're going to read about uh, the system. Uh, I'll be updating this on a regular basis, of course, based on the features that will be uh, also introduced in the system. So uh, down here, I have already worked on these two. So the first one 
uh, just has to do with uh, the introduction to uh, the system um, and uh, here you're just going to uh, see some of uh, the features uh, that um, are available as of the recording of this uh, specific uh, video. Uh, these are the available features of uh, this pharmacy uh, management system. Um, and uh, if you want now to uh, access the how to, uh, then you just need to go to the get started here. Um, and if I may maximize this so that it is uh, visible on the full page, then this is what you're going to see. So I'm working on this documentation, uh, which will uh, provide uh, a platform uh, where uh, one can be able to get to, in case they want to run, how they can be able to use the ChemCare system. So, <clears throat> so I'm trying to make it as comprehensive as possible so that um, nobody uh, uh, gets into um, problems when they are trying to use uh, the specific uh, system. So the documentation is not yet uh, complete, but uh, as you can see, um, this is what I'm working on and I'm trying to ensure that uh, it is very easy uh, for anybody who uh, will be using this system to be able to understand. So um, that's it uh, for this specific uh, video. If there will be any updates, I'll be creating uh, some videos as well, uh, as well as also updating this documentation. Uh, so as to ensure that uh, everybody who is uh, using this system is up to date. And just to repeat, uh, if you would like to uh, grab this specific uh, system, it's very easy. You just need to get in touch uh, with me. And then I'm going to help you to uh, grab this system. If you have any issues or if you don't know how to install it uh, or install uh, PHP projects, I will also take you through that. And I can also take you through the training of how to be able to use um, the system. So, um, having mentioned that, um, see you in the next one. And that's for watching my video up to this very point.